Now, motion graphics that we've been talking about are, of course, clearly important and very exciting. But page layout and design are also critical to creating modern web experiences. As Kevin mentioned to you, web experiences need to look great across a broad range of devices. And these devices all have different screens, different orientations, different pixel densities, resolutions. And it can frankly be a real challenge for web designers and developers to make sites look great on all of these different screens. There really are two general options that are used. One is to actually create multiple versions of your site and your pages for each and every screen that you want to support and have your site look good on. That, of course, is a difficult and expensive process that is often tedious, but it produces a good result of controlling the final output, but very difficult to maintain. The alternative is to use responsive design, which has the advantage of a single implementation of your site that is going to respond dynamically and adjust to the different screen sizes on which it's being viewed. Unfortunately, responsive design does present a new set of challenges for designers and developers. It can be difficult to create this way. You either have a designer create a single comp and then leave it to the developer to interpret that comp in code on the single implementation of the page, and that usually results in something that the designer is not so happy about. Or alternatively, the designer does the work and creates all of those individual comps, and then the developer has to figure out a way to implement them all in the single responsive site, which again can create a real maintenance nightmare. There hasn't been any easy way for the designer or the developer to see what they're doing visually in real time. So they have to go in and actually work with the code and actually use CSS media queries, go in and tweak the CSS, reload it, test it, further edit it, reload it, and test it. We haven't had a tool that naturally fits into the modern workflows that we're now using and allows visual creation of responsive designs. We are building that tool. We're still in development, so we're not releasing anything today, but we want to give you a sneak peek of what we are, are, are working on. We think you're going to be excited about what we call Adobe Edge Reflow. Reflow, yeah, go ahead. Someone's excited back there, I heard. There you go. Reflow allows you to design for all of these different screens that I was mentioning at once directly in HTML. And it uses a customizable CSS grid system to allow you to do that. And Reflow is one of those tools that I mentioned that is itself built entirely in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. What that means is that there's no export translation involved, because you're already working directly on a web-based design surface. So Paul, why don't you show us how you can use Reflow in development to actually build out the home page of the site you started? Yeah, I would love to. And, and how you'd start out usually is you'd start out in Photoshop. So yep. here I am in Photoshop. I designed that desktop experience. Mm -hmm. I'd take it. Um, then I would start to chop up everything, all the graphics, export them out. And uh, I would have to make sure I include the notes of CSS. So this is the whatever. traditional process you would have yeah, to do. Yeah, just through. like yeah. take those okay. graphics. Throw them over the wall, give them to the developer with some notes. Hopefully, yep. they, what you get back is what you gave them, is what you hope happens. You hope happens. and keep your fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, honestly, you're using a tool that's unaware of CSS and what the web sure. can do. Okay, so there has to be a better way. Oh, and let me remind you that I'd have to do this for, say, a tablet experience. And over and over layout. again, like I was talking about. Yeah, 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 you got it. So I can use Reflow to execute this. So I'd still export out my graphics, and then I would launch Reflow. As I open it up right here, you can see here I am in Adobe Edge Reflow. I have some graphics already placed. So those are the assets you took out of Photoshop, and you just put them now on your page, which is that web design surface. Yeah, and I literally just added an image, dropped them in, and started working with them. In mm -hmm. fact, if I wanted to add a sidebar over here, I can quickly add a box, otherwise known as an HTML div, Yep. creating that asset right here as I just kind of get this lined up based on the grid sim system that I already have set up, and I can start to stylize it as well. I see. So now you're actually color. working directly in CSS, these yes. objects that you're putting on the, on the screen. Yeah, there. so what? You typically type in, say, border radius. Well, mm -hmm. here, change that to 30 pixels. It'll round to that corner. Let's round the other corner. Yep. Just like that. Nice. Let's give it a drop shadow Make it match of the other black. Yep. And there's my 
my drop shadow, adding that in exactly the way I want it, visually being able to see that and generating, you guessed it, generating, right, the CSS for it. So if we take a peek right down here. Oh, so there's your actual code. Yeah, yep. exactly. Nice. So I know I have. But you a, can then take that and drop it into your project. Yeah, you can drop it directly in, and you'll get exactly what you see here, which is nice. Scrolling up, uh, I'll just quickly drop in also my asset that I created earlier, because I did actually create this. Uh, edge animate piece, and I'm just going to place this in for position only. I can draw. Oh, I see. So that way, you at least have a sense for how your overall page looks, and there's your animation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So nice. just to give me an idea, mm -hmm. I'm really generating CSS as it yeah. stands right now. So from there, I can uh, export out the CSS. But there's more it can do. I'm dropping in all this content. Uh, by default, it is flexible, so you can see how yeah, that content works. That scaling you were talking about with that percentage stuff, yeah. Uh-huh, and I can lock it down if I uh -huh. want. I have full control, but even as I start to uh, shrink this up to more of a tablet size, it starts to break down, especially those photos. Yeah, they're getting tight. So I can add a breakpoint right there. So I added one at about 900 pixels. Okay, and that adds a media query. So that's like a, like a tablet width, approximately. Yeah, so I can yeah. have my tablet width, the same graphics, and I can start to manipulate this. Uh, in fact, these four images, um, let's go ahead and remove one, or basically hide it. It's still there, and start to adjust these other items as I'm doing I see, now. so you can spread them out, give them a little bit more space, and make it that it's going to look cleaner. Yeah, exactly, nice. and I don't, I don't have to recreate any of the assets in a, a new PSD or a new Photoshop file or anything. It's literally working with those same assets, creating this layout. And I can really start to customize it, but let's take a peek again right down here at the CSS. Oh, I see, and it's actually showing you that media query. Yeah, nice. exactly. Um, let's uh, bring it down a little more. Let's go down to, oh, that's looking really tight to our mobile view. So this is like smartphone now. Adding that same uh, a breakpoint, yeah, otherwise do, known as a something. media query. The animation's looking pretty crowded. Yeah, the you know what? Pictures are too. Let's go ahead and take that animation since you mentioned it, and just turn that off because for the mobile experience, I just want them to get directly to the content. Yep. And coming in here, I can start to um, not delete, but just hide the content that I don't need. You're gonna use just one picture at the top. Yeah. Let's just okay. like stretch this out, and they can kind of click through it. And I can adjust this content further as well. Right, but so I'm it quickly, moves down to scroll. Yeah, it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, kind of setting this up just right, all generating that CSS as we take a peek. Say, for instance, with this image, you can see. And there's your next media points. query, right? Yeah, nice. again, scaling up, we can see how it changes from mobile to tablet, clear to the desktop nice. experience. In fact, what you'd then do is you would give it to the uh, you know, developer, and they'd start to there use that content in the real experience, and you'd end up with something like this with the animation. You can see the real there content it drops, in there, and then it drops again, nice. right down there, and we can click through those photos. Beautiful, as well. nice. Thank you. Thank you. So you can see that's a great example of what Reflow can do, and what a huge time saver it can be, and also making your development a lot more fun. It makes it really easy to create these responsive layouts. And we're targeting to get a preview release of Reflow out by the end of this year. So like the other things that we're talking about, you can partner with us in helping to refine this tool, give us lots of feedback, and help us to make something that is going to be really a pleasure to use.